What is going on, everybody? Know your eyes, do not deceive you. That is me, yours truly, with two videos in two consecutive days. We're we on a streak. We are on a streak. Can we make it three days in a row? Probably not, but hey, I digress of the snow, my busy life. I have found some time. So, be sure to check out my channel, Black Bond, and my prior video, Nintendo Direct 21721. Total failure, because that's exactly what it was. No Metroid, no SMT5, no Bayonetta 3, no Breath of the Wild 2, but we did get another thing I will mention a little bit later. As far as where you can follow me, you can catch me under the Black Beer Eye on Twitter. That's where all the fun things happen. That's where all the instant action happens. That's where the Trials of Grievance happens. And if you can tell me what game that's from, oh man, I will stream a free game for you right then and there. And we all know that, you know, old uh, Carson Wentz, he ain't want nothing of uh, old Big Nick over there in Chicago, hence why he didn't want to go there. But I digress. If you do enjoy my content and you do enjoy the Welcome Wheel podcast, Sunday's the new time of 6 o'clock. Be sure to check out our Patreon. You are not obligated to check it out or support it. But if you do want to support it, we always appreciate it. Now, on to the news. Xbox news. Good news. Good Xbox news. That, that sounds actually crazy. Because it very so rarely ever happens. And it so rarely, rarely ever happens to come out of my mouth because it never really happens. But you know what I say, people. 33 frames per second is not very playable. 60 is playable, but not ideal. I like to see above 100 frames per second. Hey, that's what I've been saying. That is what I've been preaching, and that is what I've been doing on my oh-so-glorious RTX 3080. But now, Microsoft has done what I've been seeing as one of the best features on PC gaming for the longest. That is the ability to carry over, play your entire library on modern settings. I'm playing KOTAR 2 right now. 1440p, max settings, 60 frames per second. It is what it is. It's a very good feature. Now, Microsoft is talking about this brand new frames per second FPS frame rate boost technology that is done at a system level, which tweaks legacy Xbox games to run at even twice or up to four times the frame rate. So I'm assuming that games that are targeting at 30 can run at 60, and maybe 60 can run at 120. And this is even better because... Game developers don't need to uniquely take the time and resources to program this. Let's take Code R2 that I'm playing, for instance. There's no way in hell Bioware is going to go back and change that game. They just aren't going to do it. They're not going to do it. But if it's done at a system level, then they don't have to do it. And anybody that has a large library of games can play all of their games with more modern features. I think that's great. I think that's good. So they demonstrated it on a couple games. It doesn't necessarily change the frame rate. You're still going to be playing at welfare frame. I'm sorry, resolutions. It doesn't necessarily change the resolutions. You're still going to be playing at welfare resolutions, but you know, you can't have it all. If you want it all, you got to get it on PC. If you want some of it all, this is still good. This is still good. So, you know, games are running great. Watch Dogs 2, the frame rate's now at 60, but it's still running at 900p. Eh, 900p kind of sucks, but again, you're looking at things like Super Lucky's Tale from 30 frames per second to 120 frames per second. This is good. There's nothing bad about this. You can say that Microsoft only concentrates on old games and needs to concentrate on new games. I understand that, and I get it. But this is not a bad thing. If this was something that Sony or Nintendo did, this would be amazing, because both of those companies have exponentially superior backlogs and libraries and histories of games. But the other companies don't want to do that. You know what they want to do instead? They want to do this. They want to sell us a 10-year-old game 
for sixty dollars. Ten years old. Ten years old. Whereas on the Xbox side, if you already have the game, you can just play it. You don't have to buy the game again to get 60 frames, to get widescreen, to maybe get better resolution. If you have it, you can already play it. And here's my issue with Nintendo. It seems like every generation... Any kind of digital purchase you've made does not carry over. You literally have to buy the same game over. And I understand, you know, that the Switch isn't a disc system and you can't do this and you can't do that, but this game shouldn't be any more than $20. I'm sorry. They probably have a GameCube or a Wii emulator programmed directly into the Switch with the boosted specs, it wouldn't be hard to up the resolution, to double the frame rate to 60 to improve it. There was probably no work done in this game. And yet they're going to sell it for $60, and it's going to sell millions. Nintendo at this point is releasing more... We, okay, we always get on Microsoft for not doing new games or for releasing old games. Nintendo literally releases more old games than they do new games. The entire Wii U library outside of Xenoblade Chronicles X, I believe, is on the Switch. Between that and Star Fox, whatever, Star Fox, Wii U, Command, Missions, I don't even know what that crap game was. Star Fox and Xenoblade Chronicles X, everything else is on the Switch. And now they're going back to the Wii. They've released everything on the Wii U, so now they're like, hmm, what else can we release? Let's go to the Wii. They're, they're probably going to go to the GameCube next. They are on a mission to re-release every game that is old for $60. And I guarantee, whatever machine they come out with next, the games you are buying now will not work on it.